What's up everybody, I'm Finn McKenty. this is the Punk Rock NBA, and today I'm here to talk about a guy that a certain part of the scene just loves to hate, and that guy is Ronnie Radke. For those of you who aren't familiar, he was the original vocalist for Escape the Fate, then he took a couple years off of doing music because he went to prison, which I will talk about later, and since then he has been the vocalist of Falling in Reverse. A lot of people have asked for a video about Ronnie, and I hadn't done it until now because I just kind of wasn't sure what I wanted to say. And I think what it comes down to is this. If everything that I just said is true, which is that he's been relevant for almost 15 years now, which is an eternity in scene years, and he's bigger than ever, why don't you ever hear any of the gatekeepers who decide what's important mention Ronnie Radke? Well, I think the answer to that is actually a lot bigger than Ronnie himself. It's about how we as fans think about artists and public figures in general. And you might not like some of what I'm gonna say, but I don't know, I think it needs to be said. But before I go on, I wanna thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with more than 25,000 classes in design, business, and more. Premium membership gives you unlimited access so you can join the classes and communities that are just right for you. And best of all, there's a free two month trial using the promo link in the description for this video. If any of you are interested in design, whether that's lettering or typography, anything like that, I would highly suggest you check out Jessica Hish's Logo Design Masterclass. Skillshare is also super affordable. An annual subscription is less than $10 a month. So if you wanna get your learn on and support the channel by showing Skillshare how awesome this audience is, hit that link, sign up, and we'll see you there. I also want to thank Ronnie for his time. He answered a bunch of questions for me as I was writing this video. So with that out of the way, let's get into it. Part one, ahead of the curve. If you've watched any of my other videos, you probably have a good sense of what I like. People who come out of nowhere, do something that nobody saw coming, that pisses off the critics and the gatekeepers because they don't understand it, and then go on to be proven historically correct and get the satisfaction of seeing those same gatekeepers later do a 180 and pretend that they liked it all along. And Ronnie has been one of those people pretty much his whole career. That line is kind of an obnoxious, braggy way to say it, but he isn't wrong. Escape the Fate were absolutely one of the most influential bands of their generation, and a whole lot of people bit his style, and honestly, still do. And it's easy to think of them as just another scene band, but actually, what you think of as a scene band is largely based on a template that they had a big hand in creating back in 2006 or 2007. Yes, of course, they weren't the only ones doing it, but they were definitely one of the most important bands of that generation. Specifically, if you look at that whole like hard rock Motley Crue inspired thing that bands like Asking Alexandria and Black Veil Brides would go on to do a few years later, Escape the Fate really created the blueprint for that. And yes, there were bands like Atreyu, 18 Visions, and Avenged Sevenfold who did that a few years earlier. I loved all those bands and I had been listening to them for years, but what Escape the Fate did felt really different to me at the time. For one, there were way less metal than those bands. They looked metal, but if you listen, they actually sound a lot more like early Fall Out Boy or My Chemical Romance than anything else. They're really more of a rock band than like a metal or metalcore band. And with the benefit of hindsight, it's obvious to me why they took off the way that they did. First of all, their songs were just way, way better than pretty much all their peers. And second, Ronnie was a natural. He was just one of the best front men in the genre and still is. If you were around back then, you will know exactly what I'm talking about. Situations was huge. That was an early MySpace hit single, and I totally get why. It's a super catchy song. They're cute guys who just nailed that whole scene look. And they also had a great video for the song that was perfect for kids to watch on Steven's Untitled Rock Show after school. Now, whether you like them or not is up to you. If you're not into Escape the Fate, that's totally fair. But the fact is that they made a huge splash with their debut album, Dying is Your Latest Fashion, and Ronnie was the face of that whole thing. Hello, Thurman. It's your first day of school. Now, as most of you know, this was his last recording with Escape the Fate due to legal issues. He actually went to prison, which I'll talk about in a minute. He was replaced by Craig Mabbitt of Bless the Fall, and Craig has been their singer ever since. And actually, I really like the Craig era of the band. It's different than what they were doing with Ronnie, but I think it's really good. And they're a really successful band. As of now, they have 1.4 million Spotify listeners, and they deserve full credit for achieving what they have. But I also think it's safe to say that Ronnie kind of built that house. 
After getting kicked out of Escape the Fate, he went on to form his current band, Falling in Reverse. He announced the band when he was in prison, built a whole bunch of hype around it, wrote a ton of songs while he was locked up, and hit the ground running as soon as he was released in 2010. Since then, they've released four albums and a couple EPs, and if you listen to Falling in Reverse, it's super clear to me that he was the creative force behind early Escape the Fate. For example, listen to an early Falling in Reverse song like Raised by Wolves, and you can easily imagine that being on the follow-up to Dying is Your Latest Fashion if Ronnie was still in the band. Due to mistakes I have made to the state, I get trapped inside a Dillinger, diligently thinking of ways. But what I think is really interesting about Falling Reverse is that it's so much more than that. It's much broader in scope than anything he did with Escape the Fate. Falling in Reverse's songs really are kind of all over the place. They'll go from post-hardcore to hard rock to metalcore even to ballads and why and rap. And even though it's all over the place, in my opinion, it all works. And listen, whether you like Falling in Reverse or not, it takes some pretty serious talent to pull off genre bending like that without it feeling forced or cluttered or messy. If you think about other bands that pull it off, like say A Day to Remember and Issues, those guys are at the top of the food chain as far as like their creative ability. And in my opinion, Falling in Reverse is right up there with them. But weirdly, nobody seems to give them any credit for it. Find any kind of gatekeeper nerd publication that gives Ronnie an ounce of credit and I'll buy you dinner. Now, Falling in Reverse is one of those hardcore bands. One of those hardcore bands that little rebel teeny boppers seem to love. And of course, they're led by these little teeny boppers demigod, one of their demigods. Ronnie Radke. And once again, just like with Escape the Fate, I have to point out that he's been ahead of the curve by several years with Falling Reverse as well. I remember when the song Alone came out and everyone thought it was just insane that somebody in a metalcore would do rap because you can't do that, right? Got a lot of people talking nothing but chatter. Why'd you switch your style up and then I don't matter? Well, fast forward a few years later and you couldn't even begin to count the number of guys who went from being in a metalcore pop punk band to being a rapper wearing Gucci sneakers. Like, at this point, that's so common that it doesn't even raise an eyebrow, and Ronnie did it years before just about all of them. And by the way, one thing you guys may or may not be aware of is that a fair amount of bands, like scene bands, get, eh, let's just say, a lot of help writing their songs. I won't go so far as to say that they don't write their songs at all, but sometimes there are cases where the producer has more of a hand in writing the song than the band does. And I thought that was the case with Ronnie, because his songs are so good, the hooks are so catchy, that I thought for sure he was one of those guys that just had producers write everything for him, but it turns out I was wrong. He does collaborate with producers, of course, just like anybody, but we have a lot of mutual friends, including producers who have worked a lot with him, and I asked all of them, like, hey, come on, man, does Ronnie really write all that stuff? Like, he doesn't write it, does he? And every single person I asked gave me the same answer. Yeah, no, he writes it. So there you go. I was one of those people that didn't want to give Ronnie any credit, and I was wrong. <laughs> And as much as people want to say that Ronnie's washed up and he got kicked out of Escape the Fate and ever since then he's just been trying to stay relevant, the truth is, actually, Falling in Reverse are bigger than Escape the Fate ever were. Their latest album is about to go gold, they're sitting at almost 2 million Spotify listeners, and yet, like I said, he's pretty much ignored by the media unless there's some kind of drama involved. And speaking of drama, that brings us to part two. Yeah, but I heard Ronnie's one of these guys that some people just love to hate and kids love to talk about in comment sections. And to be fair, he brings some of that on himself by engaging with them on social media when he probably shouldn't, saying some unwise things that probably would be better left unsaid. But putting that aside, I wanted to find out what is actually the deal with so many of the things you often hear about him. Didn't he go to prison for killing a guy? Not exactly. He was on probation after being part of a fight where somebody did get killed. Then he failed a drug test, which is a probation violation, and that is what he went to prison for. He personally didn't kill anyone. Ronald Radke was found guilty for his role in the death of 18-year-old Michael Cook. He was shot and killed more than two years ago now. Didn't he sexually assault someone? I vaguely kind of remembered some headlines about this, but I wasn't really sure what happened, so I looked into it. Here are the facts as far as I can determine them. 
Ronnie Radke has been exonerated as fully as can occur in less than one week. The police swabbed the tour bus and the car and found no evidence of a rape. The police have taken no action against Radke. The police did not arrest Radke. The prosecutor has not charged Radke. Radke was not required to post bail. No restrictions have been placed on Radke's movements. And here's the court paperwork that pretty much backs that up. Didn't he hit some girl with a mic stand? Yes, he did. For whatever reason, he thought it would be cool to throw the mic stand into the crowd and hit a couple fans a few years ago. Probably not the smartest thing in the world for him to do, and he seems to genuinely regret his poor judgment on that. The main thing that I do regret is the incident involving the microphone stand, and I apologize profusely for that. It was a stupid move on my part. Ronnie's such an asshole. Didn't he say, fill in the blank stupid thing on Twitter? Uh, I could not possibly go through the list of all these things, but the answer is yes, he probably did say that. He definitely makes things worse for himself by saying some dumb shit on social media and firing back at trolls when he probably shouldn't, and I'm guessing he would probably agree with me on that. So the way I see it, Ronnie has definitely done and said some stupid things and made some pretty big mistakes. But on the other hand, I do have to give him credit for doing some pretty cool things like raising money for cancer patients and some other charities. And from reading his lyrics, which by the way are a lot more substantial than I think people realize, what I see is someone who was probably in a pretty fucked up place when he was younger who's now trying to be a better person. And as somebody who has gone through a similar kind of journey, I honestly relate to a lot of it pretty hard. I have tried so hard to be a better soul. I mean, sometimes it's almost like a poppy or hate breed. Now, if he was the same person as he was 10 years ago, or even the same person as he was when he got out of prison, I might think he was kind of an obnoxious douchebag. But he seems like a much happier, healthier person than he was back then. And honestly, it's pretty refreshing to me to see someone admit their imperfections and talk openly about how they're working on improving those imperfections. It's honestly a much more mature take compared to most of the genre, which is like, this is who I am. Fuck you if you can't handle it, you snowflake. It's like one of those obnoxious girls that has a bumper sticker on her shitty car that says 51% sweetheart, 49% bitch, don't push your luck. I think it takes a lot more courage to publicly say that you aren't perfect and that you have shit to work on. And to the extent that you think artists have a responsibility to be a positive influence on their audience, which I think they do, I think it's way more helpful for kids to hear that message than if anyone tries to tell you what to do, then just tell them to suck my fuck. That's not gonna help a kid succeed in life. Yeah, I think about it. I think about, like, Daddy, why, why did you go away for a while? <laughs> like, because I was crazy to my daughter, you know? Yeah. Like, I was a nut job and I had an anger problem and I was on drugs. I don't so just to kind of close this out, basically, I think Ronnie is one of those people who in hindsight will realize made a much bigger impact than he got credit for according to the tastemakers and gatekeepers. And that brings us to my last point. Part three, angel or devil? So what's the deal? Is Ronnie Radke a talentless piece of shit or a misunderstood genius with a heart of gold? Well, which is it? Cause he's gotta be one or the other, right? Well, the way I see it, and that brings me to the larger point in this video, it's actually not that simple. Humans are complex. We rarely fit neatly into any one label, but a lot of people can't handle complexity. They wanna put you into a neatly labeled little box where they can file you away and never think about it again. So when people like the gatekeepers and tastemakers that I'm always making fun of run into someone like Ronnie who doesn't fit into one of their pre-existing categories for what they're supposed to like, they hate on it. Until years later when it becomes clear that they were historically wrong, that this person or artist that they didn't understand was actually important, and then they do a 180 and pretend that they liked it all along. Like the articles you're seeing pop up now about how influential Attack Attack was, published by the same kind of sites that would have talked shit on them 10 years ago. And the same is true of a lot of other bands that are now universally praised but hated at the time, like Green Day, Blink-182, No Effects. I've seen this happen so, so many times over the years. The same people who won't write a word about him now, in five or ten years, they're gonna write some gushy, pretentious article about how Ronnie Radkin escaped the fate, changed everything in 2006. But anyway, just to kind of bottom line this whole video, the point is, be better than that. Don't jump on the bandwagon and shit on some new artist just because all your new friends are shitting on him. If you don't like it, that's cool, but don't be that guy. Don't be a headline reader. Don't just repeat the things you hear other people say without looking into the facts. You don't want to be the music equivalent of the boomer dad who shares fake news shit on Facebook like, inside Hillary Clinton's plan to take guns away from cops. 
in as for Ronnie, well, I think he's going to be here for a while. He's got a line in one of his songs about how he's going to be doing this until he's 70, and <laughs> I don't think he's bullshitting. So I'm setting myself a reminder to check in and hold him to his word. If he's not rapping about Gucci sneakers in 2054, I'm going to be very, very disappointed. All right, there you have it. For any of you who asked for a video about Ronnie Radke, now you have one. Those are my two cents on Ronnie. Let me know what you think in the comments. What do you think about this idea that we kind of expect artists or public figures to be either an angel or a devil. And when somebody doesn't fit neatly into one of those, we just kind of reject that out of cognitive dissonance. I would love to know what you think about Ronnie, about Escape the Fate, about Falling Reverse. And I also want to thank all the people who support me on Patreon at the true cult level or above. And those people are Andy B, Anthony C, Amber G, End of May, Jeff W, Jordan H, Jonas E, Justin H, Luke S, Michael B, Militant Me, Nick G, Ridley H, Ryan W, John R, and Wally P. You guys are true cult fans. I appreciate your support very much. You have my eternal gratitude. If you would be interested in supporting me on Patreon, you can check it out at the link below. Patrons get like a podcast feed, a Discord server, exclusive Q&A videos, some other stuff. So if you want to check that out, hit that link below. And I'm going to sign off for now, but I will see you next time.